At the end of the last video, I mentioned that I really wanted to get the solar connected. The reason for that was I was leaving. I went to my boat for a few weeks, and then as soon as I got back, I had to run off and do some business stuff. And I knew that this was gonna happen, so I wanted to have as much time as possible for the solar to start charging the battery pack. At the time, I didn't know what the state of charge was. I was just kind of guessing. I said it's 33%. As of right now, it's showing 90% state of charge. Camera doesn't seem level. Hmm. Anyways. I still don't know if that's actually accurate. Am I really at 90%? But what it tells me is that I've put 90 minus 33 is hard math, 55% charge into the battery. The individual cells, let me pick a random BMS. Battery C is showing an average voltage of 3.34 volts with a deviation of 0.001 volt. So the balancing is doing pretty good. That tells me it's definitely into the upper part of the charge. So they should be sitting around 3.2 volts, I would expect. So I'm hoping I'm getting kind of close, but the weather's getting worse. I'm running out of patience and I'm back and I wanna actually finish charging these up. So not tonight, but tomorrow, I am going to turn on the inverter charger and just bring it rest of the way up. Originally, I wanted the solar to charge the whole thing. What can you do? I'm impatient. I wanna charge it up. I would be curious to see if the JK can get these things balanced out at the top end when they're being pumped with 70 amps of current. With the solar, it's pretty easy because it's I've, the highest I was getting, I think I saw like 900 watts at one point. Realistically, I tend to be sitting around 200 watts. Where my solar panels are on the roof is very suboptimal. So it was charging so slowly that the balanced current could easily keep everything in balance. Let's see what happens when we do the full charge off the inverter charger. As you can see by all the buck converters on the floor, they have not been reconnected. I was planning to reconnect them tonight, right now, when I set up the video. But then I went looking for my socket set and I realized my daughter borrowed it and it's still in her car. So I think we're gonna have a short film night tonight, which won't mean anything for you because it's gonna cut very quickly to tomorrow. So the key mistake, if you remember in the last video, Andrew made the comment about the diagram that I showed him was right. If you look, there's the protection diode and on the far side of the protection diode, it goes down to the positive of the capacitor and into the input of the buck converter. So on the smoked one, well, first of all, I've already replaced the bad capacitor. That yellow line used to go straight across and that went from the main pack input, went straight over to the positive of the capacitor and then went up to the protection diode and then from the out of the protection diode into the input of the buck converter. So when the polarity reversed, this here ended up becoming more negative and blew this. So what I did to fix it was this line got cut, I actually cut a gap out of it and then just left it free hanging. And on the back, that is the capacitors, the input capacitors positive, and it goes up to the output side or the far side of, I'm trying to remember if it was cathode or anode, but I've already forgotten. I think it was the cathode, the protection side of the diode, and that feeds the positive of the input capacitor. I just did that same fix on all of them. So you can see where I cut out the line so that it can't make the connection anymore. Hey Kepler. Mm. Hey Tatters. You guys watching? All of this is still live. I know a smart thing to do would be to shut it all down, but actually what I will do is disconnect each battery from the main bus while I do the work. And I suppose I should set a good example by wearing my safety mic glasses, as a certain somebody would say. Are you gonna hold them up this way? Oh, that works good enough. If I haven't made it very, very clear already, these buck converters are never gonna see the boat. They will keep the screen alive while I continue this build. And that is it. I'm gonna do the negative first and the positive second. One thing I noticed when I got back in that short gap I had between coming back from the boat and heading off on the business trip, so I didn't record it. I noticed that this BMS crashed on me a few times and I would have to hard reset it. It just wouldn't even show up in the Bluetooth list when I was trying to connect to it from the app. It hasn't crashed in a little while, but it's crashed on me at least two or three times to the point where I had to cycle this to get it to show up. I also had an issue where on BMSC, the minus cable, the B minus, the pin had pushed out of the back of the connector. It must have been connected enough because when I did the initial assembly in the last video, it was there and it worked. But when I came back, BMSC was missing. When I connected it, 
it had not been charging the entire time. So the other five packs were at a higher state of charge, obviously. And so for that reason, the other five started feeding power into it and it started charging at, I wanna say, I think it was initially like 100 amps and it tapered down pretty quickly, but I noticed that on the charge, it kept disconnecting on over current or overcharge current protection was kicking in and cutting off charging. And when I went to look at the configuration in the BMS, it was set to 25 amps as the maximum charge current by default. It's 150 amp BMS. I went looking, I couldn't find any documentation on why it would have been set so low. And when I reached out to Amy at Kishu, she very kindly reached out to JK and they said, oh yeah, you can set it to 150. The range is 10 to 150 with no indication as to why you'd want to set it lower than 150 or why it would default to 25. If they were concerned about cable size as an example, then why would the discharge not also be set to 25 by default? It's weird. I asked her for clarity and she said that's all she heard from JK. So I'm gonna to have to go and check the other BMSs. I'm gonna to have to set them all to 150 amps maximum charge current, but yeah, they defaulted to 25 amp. Woo, sparkies. If that worked, this should come alive again. So far so good. Interesting. When I left, all of the packs were showing 66% of state of charge. Okay, so actually that makes sense. I set the smart shunt to 33% state of charge. So even though I've put 67% of a charge into all of these batteries, they're showing 98% state of charge. Point is the screen's working again. Let us continue. So the trip I had to take when I got back from the boat was going from Toronto to Vancouver. Sparky spark. So that flight is about five hours each way, give or take. And I decided to spend that time reading as many of the ABYC standards as I could. ABYC is the, is the American Boat and Yacht Commission. It's something like that. ABYC, right here. That's what it stands for. They are one of the standards bodies, obviously by their name, they focus on America. But if you build to their standards, you generally are pretty sure you've got yourself a safe boat. And that will actually matter when it comes to things like insurance. Oh, interesting. This one's showing 72% state of charge. What does it show on the BMS? So BMS A is reporting 98% state of charge, 98% state of charge. If I go back to B, oh, it's not gonna connect, it never does. But one of you wonderful commenters told me that if I come back and I hit scan, oh, ha, this has happened a couple of times now to BMSB. BMSB will just hang up, it just locks up. The red light is no longer blinking and I cannot see it in the device list. It's still providing power, I know it's still working, but it won't come back until I reset it. Okay, reset it please. Okay, it's reset, do a scan. There, BMSB is back. It's showing 0% state of charge, despite being 53.19 volts. Oh, there it goes. It just updated to 72% state of charge. Why is it such a wildly different state of charge? Okay, let's try BMSC. Sorry, I was starting to say, one of you lovely commenters told me that if I try to click on the BMS and it doesn't show up, come back and do a scan and then connect, and it works. Should it be like that? No, of course not, but thank you. Now I don't have to at least reboot the BMS every time or restart my application every time. This one is currently showing 98% state of charge and it's also showing 53.47 volts. Somebody else also mentioned that the voltage is configurable. One issue at a time though. First, before I talk about the voltage calibration, let me finish talking about the ABYC. One of the things ABYC talked about was that regardless of the chemistry, if the battery can outgas and that outgas is flammable, then you have to stand to a different set of standards. Things like you need to have ignition switch or ignition safe switches, which these blue C switches are. The only time I have ever been able to find a video where a lithium iron phosphate cell caught fire was somebody who had taken he didn't explain how in the video, but he said that the batteries have been badly abused. Setting aside the whole question about how prone lithium iron phosphate is to catching fire, very low, it could. He was stabbing it with a metal pole repeatedly and eventually the, the battery ignited. If one of these batteries vents, the burst disc ruptures, how flammable is the gas? If the answer is at all flammable, 
The second question becomes, what are the ignition conditions? I would love if somebody could provide a link to a scientific article or a scientific test to determine what gases are released in a vent condition and how flammable and in, how flammable are they and how easy is, is it to ignite. Going back to ABYC, if they can be ignited at all, doesn't matter how likely, if they can be ignited at all, then I need to plan for my battery compartment to be able to contain spin, spilled fluids, to be able to be vented in the case of a rupture, and I need to use ignition safe equipment. So finding a citable source would be really helpful. I've looked, so far I haven't found them. Admittedly, I haven't looked super hard because I've been a little bit busy with other stuff, but I really need to have a citable source on the exhaust gases. Also, I believe it was Andy that mentioned to me that these screens never turn off. These buck converters are not going to make it to my boat. If they do, I'll put a switch on them. Um, and if they do, they'll be replaced by something that's not nearly as crappy. It's yet another source of minor frustration that JK didn't have an ability to set a timeout on the screens. Connect battery C, and if it's the same as the BMS, and I trust it is, it's gonna show 98% state of charge. Yep, 98% state of charge. Okay, battery D. Look at that boy. Hey Kepler, are you ready for your close up? I mentioned in the last video about how I was surprised at how different the voltage reading was on each of the BMSs relative to the bus voltage. And I had several people, oh, I'm very washed out. Is that better? I think that's better. And I had several people say, oh, don't worry about it. You can just calibrate it. Okay, but that actually brings up another question for me. And that is, if the BMS is measuring each battery's voltage, each cell's voltage to three places after the decimal, you know, a lot of us, myself included, fell in love with JK because they were balancing to 0 0.001234 volts or yeah, volts of each other. If it's got a really accurate reading of each individual cell, then the pack voltage should simply be the sum of the 16 cells in the battery. That voltage should be very accurate. I'm not entirely sure now how much I trust the individual cell voltage reading. I don't understand how the pack voltage could be so far out, 0.2 volt out. That's huge when you're measuring to three places after the decimal. So I'm gonna go through the calibration exercise, but one of the things I'm also going to do is I'm gonna pick one of the pack. I'm going to take a snapshot of the screen on my phone showing the individual cell voltages, and I wanna sum them up and see how they compare. Thank you. So if the BMS is measuring the voltage to three places after the decimal, either that sum is not being used for the pack voltage, or the readings we're seeing on the individual cells are not accurate. I can't square the circle of high resolution accurate readings of cells with such a dramatically inaccurate total pack reading. Anyways, keep, keep setting up screens. Can you hold that up? No, nope, you're not gonna hold that up. Sparky spark. Woo, got two for that one. I'm assuming that's the capacitors on the buck converter charging up. So it is reporting 75% state of charge. Power up the screen. 75%. 98%. Last one. That upper stage was left in orbit. Yep, 98%. So all the batteries are reconnected now. Ah, my glasses. Ooh, harsh lighting. So for the first time since the pop, the batteries are fully reconnected and all the batteries are on. Really curious about the significant difference between B and D reading 72 and 75% whilst A, C, E and F are all showing 98%. And unless I'm remembering wrong, they all showed the same estimated state of charge at the beginning of the charge process. So first what I wanna do is I'm going to assume, I wanna give the BMS the best chances of being accurate. If, if I'm gonna complain, I wanna make sure I'm doing it on 
good grounding. So what I've got is I have a, I've got a BK Precision multimeter, the one you've been seeing me use all along, my good old standard. I'm going to use the BK Precision to measure the voltage at the terminals. And I'm gonna use my Klein. This is the Charlie Lima 800. The BK Precision is the 2709 Bravo, if you wanna look up the specs of them. And I am going to use them to measure the voltage. I know you can't see these, I'm sorry, but I want to see what voltages these read compared to what the BMS is reading. Okay, so it's settled. Wow, if I even move that, it changes voltage. Okay, so right now it's settled. There's no charging happening right now. The inverter charger is unplugged and it's nighttime, so there's no solar. And I'm going to measure from the, the root of the ring terminals going to the BMS. So right now, why are you not reading any voltage whatsoever? What am I doing wrong? Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. I was holding the BK Precision. Let's get the BK Precision to zero out. Moving the cable. I guess there's just enough magnetism in the house that it's inducing a voltage. So what I'll do is I'll place the leads and I'll wait about 10 seconds. Actually, instead of waiting an arbitrary 10 seconds, I'll wait until the voltage stabilizes. 53.44 and then the BMS is reading 53.27. 53.44 through 53.45. 44, it's, it's staying pretty stable on 53.44. Let's try now the Klein. And I know you can't probably see that, I'm sorry. The Klein is going to read, and the same thing, I'm gonna hold it until it stabilizes. 53.39 versus 53.44. How stable is it when it's unplugged or when it's not measuring? As I move the cables, it's sitting around one or two millivolt, less than a millivolt. So I'm not touching it, but I'm just close, waiting for it to stabilize around one millivolt. Connecting, 53.39. There's a 0 0.05 difference in the reading from the Klein Charlie Lima 800 and the BK Precision 2709 Bravo, 0 0.05, all right? I'm gonna take another measurement with the BK Precision, 53.44. Do I have a third meter? I do. Do I have leads for the third meter? I can just swap them out. This is the Klein. Actually, out of curiosity, can I interchange the leads? Oh, I can, you know. Let's see if the readings change based on the leads that it's using. So with the old leads, this was reading 53.44. Uh, this is still reading 53.44 with the other leads. So the leads don't seem to make a difference. What about on the Klein? Oh, that's convenient. Waiting for it to stabilize. 53.39. Swapping the leads didn't change the values. All right. Then let me try these leads on the Klein Charlie Lima 600. I bought this one before I realized this one only did AC amperage. So this is cheaper. So this is the one I'm inclined to trust the least, but it is still a Klein. Oh, that's the wrong polarity. 53.42, right in the middle. So I'm gonna split the difference and calibrate it using this one because it was in the middle. This is so inaccurate across all the, like, is this why people spend thousands and thousands of dollars on test equipment and labs? Because the stuff that plebeians like me buy is just not accurate? Did I just become sad at the value of my tools? I think I might have, you know. Settings, calibrated voltage, it's setting 53.24, 24, 53.26. And I said I'm gonna split the difference so it's gonna be 53.42. Okay, so this is the post calibrated voltage. All right, I'm not gonna to try to do that math on my phone. I'll do the math. I need a proper calculator. So I've already calibrated battery A, but we're gonna start with battery A anyway. All right, so here's my six batteries. Here's their individual cells and the pack total will be down below. So I'm going to take screenshots so I can freeze it in time. All right, cell zero one, 3.338, 3.338. Cell 16 is 3.338. And this should be equals the sum of 53.412, which is what it is after I calibrated it to 53.42. Okay, I have not yet calibrated pack B. I'm doing this one pre-calibration. It's currently showing 53.13. So I'm gonna screenshot this. 
This is going to be pre-calibration. Post-calibration, I'm going to come back and see how much these change. So that's showing 3.320 and 16 is 3.320, which gives a 53.124. I just took that. I'm going to insert one column to the left. This is going to be battery B post-synchronization. Let's go synchronize it. Given that I have decided the CL600 is the middle of the road, I'm going to use it to get the voltage. I'm going to go to, okay, I'm already on battery B. What I want to see is when I measure the voltage across the posts and use that to calibrate the app, do all of the voltages here suddenly jump? That is the question. I'm measuring from the ring terminals for the balance leads to get it as accurate as possible to the, what the BMS is seeing. And I am seeing 53.40 and holding. Okay, so knowing that, I'm gonna come into the app and I'm gonna change this to 53.40. So let's watch these numbers. I think they changed. Okay, I'm gonna immediately go back and I'm gonna screenshot this again. Okay, let's go into these numbers. I wanna see how much they varied. Damn it, I forgot to hit record. I entered all the values. These were the values of each cell before I um, calibrated it. These were all the voltages after I calibrated it. It went from 53.124 to 53.41 which is what I entered. And the difference on a per cell basis was 0 0.018191718191817181817. 0.018191718171817. It sums to the right amount. And the difference from the post calibration and pre calibration sums correctly, 0.286 of a volt. I've got the screenshots that I took of the BMSB's voltage readings pre and post calibration. In real time, that was a couple minutes of difference with no load, nothing draining, no charging, nothing going in. So in theory, it shouldn't have changed at all. I don't know how it's getting the voltages. I mean, is it doing something like taking the pack voltage that it reads and then looking at the internal resistance of the cells to take that final number and divvy it up between the number of cells as opposed to actually reading the voltage from the individual cells. Something's not making sense here. It's telling us that the cells are all very closely balanced, but if calibrating can cause the voltage being reported for each cell to jump by that much, 0 0.017, that's a pretty big deviation, 0 0.019. How do we know that these voltage readings are right? I need to measure the actual battery. There, that exposes them. Hopefully you can read that. So as before, I will touch at the balance lead ring terminals. Battery one, 3.333, and it is reporting 3.338. And the voltmeter is holding really steady, 3.333. It has not fluctuated. Is it picking up voltage from the multimeter? No, it's still showing 3.338. Let's try battery two. And again, I'm doing it from the ring terminals. 3.333 on the nose, and that is reading 3.338. This is off by 0 0.005 on the first two batteries, the first two cells. We fell in love with the JKBMS because it was balancing down to 0 0.001002 volts. Trying cell C, cell three, sorry. Cell three is reporting 3.333. 334, and that is 3.336. Okay, for giggles, let me try my uh, BK Precision. Battery one, cell one, I should say. 3.336, 3.338. Okay, but that was reading high earlier. Now let's use the uh, 800. And if the trend continues, this is gonna read low. Come on, please don't. Okay, if you're gonna fall over, just stay there. Cell one, 3.334. 3.336, 3.333, 3.332. While well, the BMS is still reading 3.338, 3.336. I don't know what to make of this. I'm gonna finish calibrating these. I'm really, really interested to hear what the comments have to say about this. Right now, I have no faith in the readings coming out of the JK BMS. As far as I'm concerned, they're theater. And that might be unfair of me there might be a perfectly good reason why calibrating the voltage is reasonable and why calibrating the voltage causes all of the individual cell voltages to change. Help me understand, please. Because I'm confused at the moment. Let's finish calibrating these. So this one's reading 53.40 using 
Ironically, my cheapest meter is the most accurate, it would seem. And as always, reading from the ring terminals, 53.39. This one is dead on. There's no calibration needed on this one. This one's showing 53.24, so it's likely going to have a big jump. Let's measure D. 53.39. 53.26. I should have this queued up first, so there's the shortest period of time between reading and entering. 53.39 and holding. Okay, that one's calibrated. Did I crash E? I think I crashed E. Yep, it's not showing up on the BMS list anymore. It's not turning off either. Wow, I think I crashed E really hard. I crashed BMS E so hard that I can't even power it off. This is my not impressed voice face. BMS E is not in the list. One. Oh, now it's responding. Now it's connected. I'm supposed to trust my life to these things. Yeah. 53.32. Please tell me I'm doing something wrong. I say as I'm about to connect the uh, negative to the positive. So it's reading 53.31. I suspect it's going to be 53.39 or 4039. Holding at 39. You can immediately drop to 38. It's 39. Why is I just set it to. Now it's 53.39. I set it to 53.39, it took, and it did, did, just did it again. <sighs> All right, whatever, last one. This one's reporting 53.67, I'm reading 53.39 again. Same, I did it 53.39 and it dropped to 53.38. Do I have to set 0 0.01 over to get it to actually take what I want? I said 53.40 that time. The screen and the phone are reporting different values. The phone is jumping between 53.40 and 41. The screens are reading different than the BMS. I'm going to start the screen recorder for this. All right, I'm on BMS F. Oh, the cell under protection voltage is set to 2.6. Power off is 2.5. Okay, I think that's reasonable. Continuous charge current is set to 25 amp. I want that to 150, because that's what the thing's rated for. Battery F done. Let's do a rescan. Battery E it is currently set to 125, or sorry, 25 as well. Set that to 150. Let's go to, ah, oh, right, it's scan. Wait, don't connect too soon. Battery D. Wait. This one should already be set higher because it's the one I was having trouble with. Nope, or maybe it was battery B that I had trouble with. Or maybe I didn't change it. I don't remember now. Ah, sending failure. Oh, well, now I know what happens if you try to set a value that's too high. Okay, can you connect please? Can you please connect? No, oh, had to reset the app that time. Okay, that's done. So you can see they're all calibrated, roughly. 53.39, 38, 38, 38, 39, 39. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to finish charging these up so I can calibrate them all at 100% state of charge and then see if they all stay in a similar state of charge. I'm gonna do something I haven't done in a long time. Plug in the charger. That is set to on. Nope, there it goes. Are you gonna start charging? Why are you not charging? Scheduled charge. Yes, I know it's a scheduled charge, but it should be within the window that it should charge. I haven't touched this since I did the time shifting work, so this might be messed up. I think what I need to do is go into the VRM and factory reset this. 
I still want to do the time shift at some point. I need to figure out how to do that in a way that doesn't get me in trouble. Right, let's reset this. You can see where I disconnected the single pack and it started charging back up off solar. It was over 30 days ago, but you can see how it's been charging. You could actually see the sun gets less and less effective as the falls come in. How do I reset this to factory defaults? Actually, if I disconnect from here, I do have an adapter for this. USB-B to USB-C adapter. And plug that into the Mac. Will it see it now? Oh, it can. Nice. Okay, so I can turn off the phone. I can stop the phone recording. Oh, there's a firmware update, which I believe will reset it to factory defaults. So kill two birds with one stone. Updating the product firmware resets all settings to factory defaults. Yes, let's do that. All right, you're gonna start charging this time. I'm not gonna force anything. It's probably still, still rebooting. Oh, that's an ominous sound. Oh, is it charging? I think it just tripped my breaker. It just tripped the breaker. <laughs> Okay, 15 amps input was probably, oh no, because it reset to factory defaults. Oopsie, okay, let's unplug that. Hey Kepler, do you wanna show us where the breaker panel is? That's the food. That's not the breaker panel. Which one is it? Rack one, rack two, spare. Oh, there it is. You can see how it's in the middle compared to this one. Tatters. Are you both begging for food? Look at how fat you are, buddy. All right. Yep, okay, so the input current jumped. Current limit overruled by remote. Now I'm gonna set this, let's set this to 12 amps. Oh, it went to 13.2 amps. Okay, good enough. Oh, okay, so right now I've got AC input and AC loads set up separately, and that happened when we were doing the time shifting work. So I'm gonna reset now. And let's see if that reverts back to the way it was when I got the Quattro in the first place. I'd really like to see this start to charge the batteries. That's how I want to end the video, charging the batteries. Oh, right. I can't charge the batteries because I unplugged the mains. Because I tripped the breaker. You gonna start charging the batteries now? That'd be real nice of you. Yes, it's charging. It's charging at 1200 watts. This hasn't finished updating yet though. Why is that not? Why is it showing no AC input load? All of that's empty. Oh, is that because I stole the, uh, the e-bus? I bet you that's why. Yes, there we go. I forgot it had to have the, the servo gets the data from the Quattro from this. And because this was currently plugged into the computer so that I could configure it, that's why it wasn't showing the data there. Finally, it's charging. I mean, we got to 90-ish percent. <laughs> the fan just kicked in. With that whirring behind me and this showing that I'm pulling 1340 watts from the grid after hours when the hydro's cheap. Hydro is how we say electricity in this part of the world. I'm going to end this video here. I'm not going to leave this charging when I go to sleep. So I'm going to let it charge for an hour or two, totally unrelated to the channel. I've got woodworking class tomorrow. So when I get back from that, I will plug this back in and I'm gonna keep this charging until it looks like the batteries have sucked up all of the power they can, and then we'll recalibrate. The full pack is actually online. Nothing's blown up, again. <laughs> it's alive! I've said that a few times in this project, but this is the big one! It's the big, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive. I gotta show you guys this. I know I said the video was ending, but. It's done. I mean, in terms of done, it's not even close to done. In terms of being fully online and charging up, it's done. What an epic. I have my doubts about JK, 
about the accuracy of their voltages, but I think these are all solvable problems and perhaps really not that big of a deal at the end of the day. Let's get this thing to 100%. I'm Midget Mermaid. I'll see you in the next video. Interesting. That BMS, I know you can't read the screen right now, it's saying it's getting 3 amps and it's sitting at 53.98 volts, is noticeably warmer than all but the first one. BMSA is a little warm as well. Not terribly warm. I mean, the screens are warmer. Oh. A kitty. A, a cat for thermal comparison. What I was really curious about was the temperature of the charge cables, because that's a very long line. Yeah, 14 degrees Celsius. That's not too bad. That's the Serbo GX. The wire going to the mains cat head. Oh, two cats. Hello. The wire going to the mains is sitting at 20 degrees. The ambient of the house is 21 degrees. So, I mean, everything is barely room temperature. But, for whatever reason, I mean, I can't feel any heat. I mean, you can see how much hotter my hand is than that. But yeah, something to note. BMSF is a touch bit warmer, as is BMSA. Not bad, not bad at all. Sorry for the uh, low quality cell phone video and audio, but it's Sunday evening and I wanted to show what's happening. What I'm noticing is BMSA and BMSF are pulling in five, six, seven amps, whereas BMS is B, C, D, and E are not pulling in as much power anymore. BMS A and F are on the first and last terminal. I, maybe it's just a coincidence. It seems like the outer packs got charged less than the inner packs. Maybe it's just coincidence. But yeah, I thought that was interesting, so I wanted to record it and share. So I only run the charger when I'm awake. And I was getting ready to go to bed, and I noticed something really interesting. The battery A, which is the first or the leftmost, and battery F, which is the rightmost, are now taking in 7.4 on battery F, 10.4 on battery A, and dramatically less on the other three. Indicating to me that the outer two packs were, are charging at a slower rate than the central four packs. Is it just a coincidence that the outside packs are lower? I mean, all the batteries came in the same shipment. They should all be the same. Inverter charger off. Yes, the central four batteries are dumping power into the outer two batteries. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the power is coming in to the first bolt. There's A, B, C, D, E, and F. Why would the central four receive more power than the outer two? I mean, I'm sure they're just gonna balance out as the evening goes on and they'll be fine in the morning, but can anyone help me understand this? Huh, good night.